Apple's 2019 MacBook Pro has been in our office for over a week, and we've discovered some pretty amazing changes in our in-depth testing. But before I get into that, let me quickly remind you of what went down with last year's MacBook Pro release. When the 2018 MacBook Pro with the new 6-core i9 processor hit the hands of reviewers, some major thermal management problems quickly arose, and although Apple quickly patched some of those issues, it was too late. The i9 MacBook Pro was already known for thermal throttling in the mind of the consumer. And it's true, we tested it ourselves and found almost no difference between either of the three 6-core CPU options so we told people just to go with the base 6-core processor. On top of that, 2018 MacBook Pro started experiencing the same major keyboard issues as before, even after Apple attempted to fix it with a silicone barrier beneath the keys. Fortunately, some positive news came when Apple updated the MacBook Pro with new Vega graphics, and after testing the Vega 20 option, we noticed better thermals for the whole system overall, and much, much better graphics performance in video editing and gaming. Now when Apple announced that the 2019 MacBook Pro will come with an 8-core processor, a lot of people laughably assumed that the throttling issues would get even worse, but after some testing, it became quickly apparent that those assumptions were wrong. Way wrong. But before we get into that, let's talk about what's changed since last year. Well, not much. Literally just the processor options and the keyboard have changed. Everything else including the design, display, trackpad, speakers, battery, and the rest of the internals are basically the same. But don't take that as a bad thing. Yes, it's been four years using the same design, and everyone's eagerly waiting for a complete redesign of the MacBook Pro, but in reality, it's already great. It's thin, sleek, and machined out of a solid block of aluminum. The speaker quality tops any laptop on the market, and the same thing goes for the very reliable Force Touch trackpad. The battery life is excellent, and the display quality is great with top-of-the-line color accuracy with its P3 wide color gamut support. The only two things I would personally change are thinner bezels on the display and of course, the butterfly keyboard, which lacks a good level of key travel and more importantly, has been crippled with reliability issues since 2016, causing a lot of consumers to think twice about buying a MacBook Pro. Now here's where it gets interesting. According to iFixit's teardown of the new 2019 MacBook Pro, Apple has changed the material of the switch covers from a tacky silicone-like material to smooth nylon, along with updating the metal dome switches as well. This could mean that Apple has figured out what's been causing the keyboard issues and finally fixed it for good. Only time will tell, but if it turns out to be true, this is a great time to buy a new MacBook Pro. Among the list of possible causes for keyboard failure, prolonged exposure to high levels of heat from the processor is one of them. So let's get into thermal throttling. Here's our configuration of the 2019 MacBook Pro as well as the 2018 model we compared it to, both priced at $35.49. When we ran our 5-run Cinebench R20 thermal throttling test, we were surprised to see that the 8-core had a higher peak turbo boost speed and ran at almost the same stabilized clock speed after being at full load for 10 minutes, despite having a base clock speed rated 300MHz lower than the 2018 model. Not only that, but it did it at a lower stabilized temperature, which could possibly help the reliability of the keyboard as well. On top of that, it managed to score 30% higher in this benchmark all while running cooler. And it doesn't end there. When Max ran his video editing benchmark suite, he noticed that the new 2019 MacBook Pro's fans were quieter than the 2018 model. As you can see here, in the same exact test, the 2018 MacBook Pro's fans are at full blast, while the 2019 model is literally sitting just above idle, and it finished with a faster score. One thing we also noticed was that the 2019 model operated at a much lower temp at idle, 35 degrees Celsius instead of 45. Now that's a pretty big difference. So what gives? How is all this even possible? Well, there's a couple of reasons. First off, Snazzy Labs discovered that Apple has greatly improved the thermal paste on the 2019 MacBook Pro, which is why we saw lower temps at idle. Also, the new A-Core is using Intel's 9th gen technology, and it seems like Intel has finally got the thermals down to where the MacBook Pro can properly manage them. Of course, the same chip in a beefier laptop or PC with water cooling will run faster and cooler, but if you consider that the chip is in a super thin MacBook Pro chassis, you really start to appreciate the performance. In fact, Linus Tech Tips tested it in Windows 10 using Boot Camp and found that it thermal throttled like crazy and performed much worse compared to using macOS. It actually outperformed the same chip in a much larger Windows laptop in some tests. So that means Apple is doing some pretty sophisticated undervolting to achieve this level of performance in such a thin chassis. So how is the performance? Well, since there's no difference at all in graphics between these identically priced Vega 20 packing MacBook Pros, 
we don't see much of a difference in standard 4K or H.265 codec editing, since those mainly rely on graphics and hardware encoding. In fact, the CPU utilization was lower on the 2019 model in some of these tests, which means there was extra processor performance available that the MacBook Pro didn't need to use because the Vega 20 graphics was already running at full blast. However, if we take a look at video editing that's heavily dependent on processor performance, like this 4.5K Red Raw export, we start to see around 22% faster export speeds in Final Cut Pro. So for graphics heavy workloads, the Vega 20 graphics isn't allowing the 8-core CPU to run at its full potential. So for those whose work is heavily dependent on graphics performance, only buy the 8-core MacBook Pro if you're also going to upgrade to Vega 20 graphics. We'd also recommend not upgrading to the 2.4GHz 8-core processor because if you compare benchmark results in Cinemage R20, you only get around 2% faster performance for an extra $200, which is not worth it at all. And if you're confused about which configuration to buy, definitely check out our 2019 MacBook Pro Buyer's Guide. Now if we switch over to processor-heavy tasks like photo editing using Lightroom Classic, the 8-core processor starts to show off a bit. Importing 50 42 megapixel raw images from the A7R3 only took 5 seconds with each laptop. The editing experience is very smooth with both MacBooks, and the only time I could tell a difference is with large brushes that have a variety of stack changes. The new MacBook is perfectly smooth, while the 2018 suffers from a little bit of stutter, but keep in mind that these are huge raw files. We created smart previews to get rid of any slowdowns, and the 2019 was just 4 seconds faster. Exporting all 50 images to JPEG was about 20% faster with the 2019, mainly because of the extra cores. So you do get a small performance bump in processor-heavy workloads, but if we focus on graphics, there isn't much of a performance boost this year looking at the top spec models since there isn't a new graphics chip alongside the new 8-core processor. But what really impressed us was the improvements to thermal management. And if Apple did, in fact, fix the keyboard issues for good, we think this might be the best year to buy a MacBook Pro in years. Now, if you're not looking to spend around $3,500 for a top spec model, we think the base $2,400 15-inch MacBook Pro is going to be an excellent value for the money. And we fully expect the base 6-core processor to outperform the 6-core i9 from last year, thanks to better thermal management. Overall, the 2019 MacBook Pro is an exceptional laptop in terms of everything from design, speaker quality, and battery life, to things like the display, trackpad, and performance. And now that it's 2019, Donglegate is just about over with tons of USB-C cable, adapter, and accessory options flooding the marketplace, like this simple, cheap, and compact USB-C to USB-A adapter on Amazon. That, and if we consider the fact that high-end Windows laptops have been getting more and more expensive in recent years, we think there's never been a better time to buy a MacBook Pro. If you enjoyed this review, give us a quick like and tap the circle above to subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.